Hi friends, the neighbors are having a lovely little get together on the front lawn. So if you can hear voices, that's what's going on. So today's video is not going to be very extreme or planned out in any sort of way. I knew I just needed to get something up. We're going to just compile all of the new products that I have yet to try on the channel into a look. Not everything is gonna be new. I just have a couple of foundations to try out, a new cream bronzer, some new brushes, and a gel liner. So this is basically just a first impression We'll throw together a look, nothing too fancy, and we'll just keep it chill. So if that sounds like a good time to you, then please keep on watching and let's get started. The look's not gonna be super fancy. I'm just gonna keep it focused on trying out these new products that I've been sitting on for weeks now. The look's probably gonna be very similar to one that Raw Beauty Christy did uh, just a couple weeks ago, I believe. She was trying to recreate this Instagram filter. Actually, I went and tried myself. I'm gonna screen record this. I'm actually gonna show you what it looks like on me because I personally think that this filter is slightly terrifying. So here it is, it's called Stacy and oh, like, do I or do I not just look like an alien? It looked great on Christy, but to me, I feel like I just look like I have crazy eyes, like really, really crazy eyes. But I do love all the freckles and I do like this winged out smoky liner moment with some lashes. So I think we're gonna do something similar to this, but we're gonna make it wearable for me. <laughs> I do find though that with a lot of those kind of face altering filters, I do end up just looking a little bit insane, but I do like the look that Raw Beauty Christie did that came out of it. But first, let me show you all the things that I have to try today that are new to me. So after the very disappointing foundation review from a couple weeks ago, I'll link it up here if you haven't seen it yet. I was bound and determined to just find a new foundation that I really loved that I could use in tandem with my ABH. A couple that I've been meaning to pick up was the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh and the Pure 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie Foundation. I thought it'd be interesting to put these two side by side to see if one outperformed the other. I actually have no idea which one I'm gonna like more. So I'm looking forward to that. I also picked up a new cream bronzer cause I was out and I had heard pretty good things about the Huda Beauty Tantor. This is their contour and bronzer cream. So this is their light bronzer cream. And after months of pining, I finally picked up the Jamie French Sigma Favorites collection, which is dubbed the Trendy and Blendy set. Now, is it just me or did Sigma do her kind of dirty on the packaging? She's fabulous. I love her. Sigma brushes are known to be very high quality. So what's with the high school photo shoot? I don't know what this is. And the cardboard box, it was kind of falling apart when it came in the mail. Like you can do right by Jamie a little better. But of course I am more interested in the quality of the brushes. There are a couple of shapes here that I did not have in my collection before, like this beautiful tulip brush and this 4D Kabuki, and I'm very much excited to try a new foundation brush. They also threw into the order some gel liner and a little brush, and I've never used a gel liner before. And that's all the new stuff. Everything else I use today will be stuff I already own. Oh, the other new thing that is uh, currently being used right now is my brand new tripod. It's very sturdy. As soon as I put this one together, I realized just how cheap the other one I had was. I have high hopes for everything, so let's just zoom in a little bit and start applying foundation, shall we? I'm just gonna throw down some primer really quickly. This whole pandemic has been such an emotional roller coaster. One day I'm feeling really good, feeling fine, feeling strong, feeling motivated, feeling productive, get shit done. Then the very next day I, I wake up at 2 p.m. and I don't wanna get out of bed. I'm just vacillating wildly between these two things and it's, oh, it's giving me a little bit of emotional whiplash and it is very exhausting. Who else can relate right now? Probably a lot of you. So I think we're gonna do the L'Oreal on this side and we'll do the Pure on this side. Both of these are recommendations from beauty YouTubers. This one by Tati, this one by Ravidi Christi. Tati just raves about this stuff, although I'm starting to <laughs> trust her recommendations less and less these days. I think me and Tati just want different things from foundations and that's okay. I'm a little worried about the shade match on this one just because the range wasn't that great. Even on the lighter end, I just felt like all of them were a little bit off, like too yellow or too pink. This this one I had matched online with their little quiz that they have on their website. Luckily, I could just pick this up in store at Shoppers because they have a pure counter. And I've walked past this foundation dozens of times and I've always wanted to pick it 
that, but I just didn't know which shade to get because they have a bajillion, which is awesome. So I input the ones that I've already used from other brands, and this is the one that came up, LN6, and I'm hoping that this is a really decent match because this just sounds like the best foundation of all time. I went to shake the L'Oreal one and it's liquidy. Like you can hear it. So I have a feeling that both of these foundations are gonna be wildly different. Anyway, I've been talking for way too long. Let's start with L'Oreal. It is really liquidy. <sighs> okay, that's fair. That's fair, quite fair. But we'll see if it oxidizes, maybe it will. I'm so interested to see the finish on this foundation. All right, let's try the Sigma Flat Kabuki because I hear that this is an excellent foundation brush. We're just gonna buff this in. looks like it's oxidizing a little bit, which is a relief. It feels really light and, oh man, I, gosh, my skin is just so busted right now. This just really highlights all of the redness, hyperpigmentation in my face like crazy. Let's just take a look, see, close up. Okay, it's light to medium coverage for sure. Let's build up a little bit more on the nose here because I feel like that really didn't do much. And the foundation brush really is quick. So let's do more tapping this time around so we're not disturbing the layer underneath. Hmm. Nose is looking a bit janky, to be honest. It is not sitting very well on my nose at all, actually. I don't know what kind of finish I was expecting. I think I was expecting it to be a bit more dewy. Yeah, my nose looks tragic. Let me zoom you in so you can look at it for yourself. Let's turn down a little brightness just a tad so you can really see. That mess. It's really patchy right here, especially. You can see. Yeah, that's too bad. Maybe I should use a sponge. Maybe I should go wet this. Let's see if we can salvage this. Hold, please. Let's try it with a sponge just to see if that does anything else. Must be seven. Let's try and build this up a bit more. Well, that kind of looks like butt. Like, you know, it really does feel fresh. It doesn't feel like I'm wearing really anything. I have a feeling this is gonna be an entirely different experience on the other side. Oh, wow. Okay, that's quite liquid as well. Was not expecting that at all. Anyway, I pumped out way too much. It's certainly darker by like a lot. Yeah, that's more my shade. <laughs> Now this one boasts very full coverage and a lot of other things as well, but that's kind of what the biggest claim is, I think. Because they say you can use it as a concealer as well as a foundation, so let's buff this one in and see what happens. Now this one feels a lot more natural than I was expecting. The way Raw Beauty Christie wears this foundation, it looks like it's gonna be so full coverage. Let's try the doe foot applicator. Okay, that's much better. I feel like this one is a dead on match. My nose on this side looks definitely a bit smoother for sure. This one's a little bit more luminous and creamier. Gives my skin a really nice finish though. It does not look as full coverage and cakey as I thought it was going to. It just kind of looks nice. Oh, I'm not returning this one. This one, this one I'm gonna hold on to. I'm just gonna take a little bit of this one. Let's tap this one in the areas that need more coverage. And there's far less redness peeking through on this side than on this side. Let's try and fix the nose on the other side using this foundation. It's gonna get cakey, but whatever. It can really cover though. And it is super duper buildable. That's a winner for sure. Well, let's dip into this cream bronzer. I think this might be the one Huda Beauty product that isn't heavily scented. I'm just gonna dip my finger in first just to see what kind of, ooh, it is. Oh, it is creamy. Looks like a good shade. Okay, and it's quite glidey. Let's start with a brush and then if I need to blend it out more, I'll use the sponge. This is the type of brush that I use to apply and blend out my cream bronzer. It's just a densely packed angle brush, good for cream product. I'm just gonna dip it into here first. And then I'm gonna tap out a little bit on the back of my hand. Well, a little bit to 
definitely goes a long way. I wanna see what happens when we use the sponge. Well, it seems to blend out nice enough, which is a relief. I was expecting the color payoff to be more immediate, but no, this is actually quite, quite sheer and easy to work with. It's a nice finish, not greasy at all. Feels like I can still work with it even after it's been on my face for a little bit. It's actually a lot cooler in tone than I anticipated. It's looking a bit more stark on this side because of the lighter color of foundation, so ignore that. Really nice and very user-friendly. Let's try and contour the nose a weens. I'm wondering what the foundation's going to do underneath. I'm actually a little bit nervous. So we're just gonna tap it in real gently. No disturbance in the force yet. Okay, let's try and blend this out. That actually doesn't look bad at all. All right, success. I think I'm ready to throw on some concealer, set everything with a little bit of powder. Let's just dab on a teeny bit of concealer under the eyes. And I think that's all we're gonna do for today. I'm most excited to test out this 4D Kabuki with is powdering under my eyes because I feel like this pyramid design is going to be very helpful for getting right under the eye with powder and we'll see if this does the trick. definitely got right in there which is good let's just take that down the sides of the nose as well oh my god nose looks absolutely terrible on that side this side looking pretty fresh blendy soft this side she's a little bit patchy let me just finish powdering and then we'll zoom in and you can take a look at all this so this side looking not too shabby. Everything worked really well together, blended really nice in this area. Texture is a little bit minimized here and no creasing the smile line yet. Everything just looks good. And then there's this side. This is a travesty. What is this? It's clinging all around my nose. The foundation lifted in this area here where I tried to blend down the nose. This is looking pretty patchy. It is not cute. All right, luckily you cannot see all of that from over here. Alrighty then, I think we can just carry on with a little bit of powder bronzer. It's amazing how nicely all the products are layering on top of each other on this side as opposed to this side. I'm just gonna go off camera real quick and slap on some brows and then we can come back and finish the rest of the look. The party don't stop upstairs. It is in full swing. So we're gonna compete with that for a little while. Apart from this nose disaster, everything seems to be settling pretty well. Under eyes don't look too terrible yet. I really wanna try out this spotlight duster with a little bit of these ambient powders from Hourglass. <laughs> such a soft brush it feels amazing then let's take this bronzer brush for the bronzer in this palette just want to swipe some on nice and quick just to add another layer of illumination let's throw on some blush because i feel like this look is a very blush heavy look definitely going to start with fresh and peachy from ColourPop because i feel like that is a pretty decent match for the filter and this filter also just goes kind of ham on the blush so let's just do what i normally do and then let's really focus this across the bridge of the nose layer up with a little bit of Milani Luminoso. I love the shape of this tulip brush. I want like seven of them. Let's just take a little bit of eyeshadow and freckle up here. Part of 
party outside is still going on. All right, let's move on to the hopefully mercifully quick and easy eye look. <laughs> so I think firstly, we're going to take some black eyeshadow and map out where we want this wing shape to go. And then we'll go in with the gel liner on top and deepen everything up. We want this to be smoky, blendy. We're gonna keep the wing to only the outside of the eye. So I think we're going to start here and map out where we want it to end. But we're trying to concentrate it on the outer corner. We want this shape of liner to extend the eye and make it look longer. open my eye I want it to lie flat which is why it's looking a bit interesting of a shape when I close my eye but when I open it it's nice and flat okay I think that's a decent shape I really like how pulled out it is all right so now I'm going to test out this black gel liner I don't even know what the consistency of this is gonna be like or how it's gonna set up but we're gonna give it a whirl it also came with this little handy dandy brush which I'm grateful for so let's try and deepen things things up a bit. That's really nice. Super smoky, soft, love that. It really is such a shame that my eyelid looks like absolute butt shit. So I think I need to do a little bit of lash surgery because we want the lashes to only really be emphasizing the outer corner. I think I need to do a bit of chopping and screwing. These lashes are already falling apart, so those will work. These are a really busted up set of Slayer lashes from Rouge and Rogue. I think those will work really good. Well, let's first do a little coating of mascara on the top. Oh yeah, that's gonna look great. Also, this is such an easy way to apply false lashes because you don't have to worry about the whole band. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how this looks, so I'm just gonna do all of this on the other side and then we will come back and wrap things up. This lash, I think, went on a little bit smoother. This one's a bit droopy. So I'm just trying to press it up here. Oh, this is such a cute eye look. Really simple, really straightforward and easy. In the filter, I don't think there is any bottom mascara. We might just leave it because I don't know, I think it's kind of a look. But first, highlight. I want something bright, something that will stand out. So I'm going to use my Physician's Formula Butter Highlighter in Pearl. I used this in the last video, but I just, I love this highlighter so, so much. And I'm gonna try this high cheekbone highlighter from Sigma. I'm looking forward to this. That is so soft. Concentrate it mostly in the center. I can't remember what the color was of the lip. I have a feeling it's a glossy peachy nude. It's actually not much. It's mostly just a bit of a peachy tone. So I'm going to dab on a tiny bit of this CoverGirl lipstick in the center. Lastly, I just want to spray everything down. I am really loving the ease and simplicity of this liner and lash combination. Such a painless process. I feel like it almost gives you that sort of eye lift effect. I really love it. Yeah, I feel fresh and cute. I wish I was going out tonight. Hold on, let's just put on a bit of gloss just for a little extra something. This is the Furless Convertibles Gloss, the one in collaboration with It's Likely Makeup. It was the color Imposter. I believe they still sell these. However, they just recently shut down the affiliate program, which I was a part of, but it's okay. No one was clicking on my link anyway, so it's not the biggest loss in the world. They've been doing some massive sales. They've closed down their Australia website. So I feel like something's up with their company as a whole right now, which kind of upsets me. If they do end up going under, that's gonna be a huge loss. All right, let's round up all the things 
things that we tried today that were new. This did not make a good first impression, I'm going to say. L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear. You kind of grab in all of the spots that I don't want you to grab onto. Everything looks fine now that it's all settled, but does not play well with others. Did not blend really well with other products. I don't know, just really not my favorite formula. And albeit feels pretty good, just doesn't look the greatest. If you have combination skin or dry skin or dry patches, I would stay away from this. The Pure 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie Foundation is indeed love at first sight. The Match Dead On has the perfect undertone for my skin, not too yellow, not too pink. Went on so easily, buildable, great finish, other products blended on top of it like a dream. This is going into the rotation. Love this so much. Was not expecting to like the Tantor as much as I did. Huda as a brand is so entrenched in the Instagram beauty community that just the name alone kind of puts me off. I can only speak for this product, but so far I'm really liking it. The tone is much more neutral than I had anticipated. It actually has a really lovely, not too orange, not too gray tone to it that ends up looking pretty natural on the skin. It shears out really nicely. It's not too pigmented. It's, it's all the things that I was hoping it was going to be, but was pretty sure it wasn't going to be, which is good. What else did we use? Oh, the brushes. Okay. For the most part, I was really pleased with all these brushes. I feel like Jamie French did a really great job putting together this little mini collection just because all of these serve a very distinct purpose and it's a great starter pack for anyone who's looking to find some complexion brushes. Sigma brushes are on the more expensive side. However, the quality is clearly there. So I feel like you are getting your money's worth, especially if you take care of these. I've been using the same shitty Morphe highlighter brush for so long now that this was a revelation. My eyes have been opened. I see the light and the light is good. The light is, the light is very good. This was great for my ambient powders. I feel like it really just hugs the curves of your face. These two things are best friends. They are going to do great things together. And the Kabuki brush, I'm going to say I need to work with it more. I'm sure it has many, many different uses. I'm just at a loss of which ones are going to benefit me. This is my first time ever using a gel liner and it was pretty foolproof. Gel liner gives you a whole lot of control. It's not going to get away from you like a liquid felt tip or brush tip liner would. It definitely took the pressure off. So that's everything for me. I think most of these things were a win. If you are still here, thank you for sticking around till the very end. These kinds of casual, laid back, really chilled out videos give me a, a nice buffer in between the creative videos that were require a lot of brain power and concentration and just mental energy for me to execute. So I hope that you can enjoy these kinds of videos just as much. So let me know what you thought of this look, what you thought of all the products. Leave a comment down below on any other Instagram filters you'd like me to try and recreate because I honestly feel like I look better like this than I would with the Instagram filter. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Let me know your thoughts. I'm going to sign off because there is a meteor shower on my island tonight and I gotta go wish on some falling stars. So I'm gonna head out, but before I do, please let me tell you all the many ways that you can help out my channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a huge thumbs up, comment down below what you thought of everything. Those two things help me out a huge deal. So also subscribing never hurts. Follow me on other social media. I will leave those right there. If you have the means, if it is available to you, I do have a Patreon. I will leave that in the description box down below. Life updates from quarantine are always appreciated. I know things are starting to open back up really soon. People are really excited. I'm really excited, but let's try and stay vigilant, stay safe, wash your hands, and unlike my neighbors, keep your distance. Above all else, just be kind and be generous, and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.